Hello everybody, my name's Paul Tace. In this video, we're gonna be looking at five things you might not know about your DJI Mavic Mini or your Mavic Air 2. Let's get started. Okay guys, so as I said, this video is about the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2. These are gonna be general tips that apply to both drones. Now these are things that I didn't find out straight away and had I known, it would have made using the drones a little bit easier. Okay, so tip number one is about the return to home button on the remote. Now if you're just flying along and you tap the RTH button on the remote, this will instantly stop the drone whichever direction you're flying. So even if you've got your finger on full throttle going forwards and you hit the RTH button, it will stop it dead. Now if we press it twice and hold it down, the drone will return to home. It's worth noting that if the drone is within a few meters of you, it will just land where it is. Now this works on both the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air too. Tip number two is you can use your finger on the phone to move the gimbal on the drone. Now if you've got your Mavic Mini in the air and you hold your finger down on the screen, you'll get this little grid up here, and if you move your finger up and down, this will make the gimbal move up and down. Now if you do this with Mavic Air 2, you can not only move your gimbal up and down, but also left or right. So I actually can't take credit for this tip, this is one I found out recently on PD Tech's channel. Uh, feel free to check him out, I'll leave a link in the description down below. But I'm sure you can find this really useful. And this also leads us on to tip number three. Tip number three is to use the advanced gimbal settings. If you go into a control and then go down to advanced gimbal settings, you can then go in there and control your pitch smoothness and your pitch speed. Now when I'm flying, I personally like to set this to a 25 to 30 for the pitch smoothness and about 19 to 17 for the pitch speed. And this will get the effect that I like. However, you can find out what works for you and set it your way. I've actually done a video about this before in more detail. So if you'd like more information, you can hit a link in the top right hand corner now or in the description down below. The only time I really tend to change this is if I'm using ND filters and I want a quick transition. I'll set the pitch movements to zero and the speed up to 100 and this will get us a really blurred effect which is useful if you're using the ND filters. Tip number four is if you get the crosshair on the screen this is about the same size as the drone. So what we can do is we can go into settings, go into camera and then go down to grid lines. If we look on the last one we can see this is the crosshair. When we've got this on screen, this is going to be about the same width as the drone. So if you want to fly for a small gap, you can aim this through it and know that if the crosshairs are not touching anything, the chances are your drone's not going to hit anything. Now I do have a video again about flying through small gaps and how to use this technique better. If you look in the top right hand corner of the screen now or in the description down below, you can find out more information. It's also worth pointing out at this stage, there are other grid line options uh, such as uh, splitting the screen into a grid so you've got the rule of thirds which can help you with your photography and also your composition for video and it also has a big cross. And lastly we've got tip number five and this is you can actually put your phone in aeroplane mode when flying your drone. So if you go into settings and turn your Wi-Fi off you can still fly your drone because the Wi-Fi comes from the remote to the drone and not from the phone to the drone. Now I personally find this useful because if you're flying, you know you're not gonna get any calls. <laughs> my mum or my sister often call me when I'm halfway through a flight. And also if you're recording your phone screen, you're not gonna have any messages pop up and ruin the shot. The only time you ever really need to be able to connect your phone to the internet when flying your drone is beforehand if you need to do any firmware updates or any software updates. Now I know I said I was gonna do five tips, but I'm just gonna put in one bonus tip. So tip number six, is if you're flying your Mavic Mini and you've accidentally forgot to put your uh, SD card in, you can still actually record straight to your phone. When you do this, it'll record to your phone at uh, 720 at 30 frames per second. You can also take pictures. Again, this will be at 1280 pixels by 720. But it is worth pointing out that any jerkiness in the transition will come through in your video, which you wouldn't do if you had the SD card in. And if you're going out and you forgot your SD card when flying your Mavic Air 2, that's not a problem at all because it's got eight gigabytes of internal storage. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I hope to see you in the next one.